Hello Booktube! Welcome to Lizzie Fay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth and it is Friday, May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. Uh, instead of filming a Friday Reads video today, I need to try again to film my April wrap-up. Now I have tried the last couple of days to get this done and every time either something goes wrong or I have to start over or I get done and I'm just not happy with the way the video looks. So um, I'll probably film a, a weekly wrap-up tomorrow on Saturday, but for now I really want to get my April wrap-up done so I can and get these books returned to the library and uh, and move on with May, middle grade May and all of that. So most of these books I've already talked about. Uh, the last two books that I have read most recently, uh, I'll just tell you about those first and then the rest of them I'm just going to go through real quick. So um, I technically finished 16 books during the month of April, but I'm going to tell you about 17 because this last book that I finished was one I've been working on off and on for a few months and I just didn't want to keep putting it on hold so I decided to go ahead and finish it even though you know it was a couple of days into May and that is Stranger World by my friend Jack Castle. This was really bizarre but in a good way. It was just a lot of fun. Uh, it's uh, blurbed as being a theme park gone wrong. You don't even really realize that though I think unless you read the back. Um, it's But it is what it says, a stranger world. It is it's bizarre. Uh, a lot of interesting characters, not all human. Um, the the land, the world is um, is very strange and uh, has a lot of different sections and different areas. And um, I don't want to go into a lot, but uh, it's got some steampunk elements, some fantasy. Uh, I don't know. It's a very unique book. It's an adventure and it's just really unusual. So it's available on um, in this uh, print copy, which looks chunkier than it is, but it does have some uh, uh, large font and double spaced. But it's also available on ebook. I enjoyed reading this on ebook. I thought it went quickly on ebook, and um, even though I have my physical copy, I read the majority of it on my Kindle. So uh, both are available on Amazon, and uh, I would recommend you picking it up. It is really good. So the book that I finished uh, right before that, that I didn't really enjoy, I only read this for Mystery Book Club, even though it's really not even a mystery. It is crime fiction. And uh, it was the last book picked by the previous leader. Now I'm going to be taking over the Mystery Book Club at our public library. And I decided to go ahead and read this just in case anybody you know, wants to discuss this one, uh, but we're going to be picking new books for the rest of the year after that. This... Really, it just boils down to the foul language. I think the story itself I could have enjoyed if I just didn't have to hear the F word and other crude language in the middle of all of it. And I was afraid of that going in, which is why I never thought I would read this to begin with. Um, that's why I didn't like The Martian, because three out of the first ten words is the F word in The Martian. And, uh, and that turned me off right away, even though the story was great. Um, so this one... At least it didn't assault me on the first page, but there was a lot of it, you know, sprinkled around. And so that was really why I didn't care for it. Um, I think the story itself, uh, you know, I think is enjoyable. So, um, you know, just depends on what you like to read and what you like to listen to. All right. So prior to that, then we had the Amish in April readathon, and I read eight books for that, so I'll just go through them quickly. I have already wrapped these up, and all the information will be below as far as the narrators, and uh, and also uh, I did a, a full wrap-up of these books. So I read The Sun Room by Beverly Lewis in print. I listened to a full version of The Postcard by Beverly Lewis um, on Audible, and it was it's part of the romance package. Then the sequel to that is The Crossroad. I listened to an abridged version of that on Hoopla, and I had uh, had listened to both of those before several years ago. Then, uh, for the first time, I listened to Sanctuary on abridged audio on Hoopla. Uh, these last two were narrated by Amy Lilly, and I think Barbara Caruso narrated um, the postcard on the full version. Uh, this one, I'm definitely interested in going back and reading the full version at some point, if I can. Then I read Two Cozy Mysteries. I listened to them on audio. These are both on Hoopla, but uh, one of them I listened to from uh, on CDs from the library. So uh, I have it here. My favorite part about this book is the dog, Oliver. He's so cute. This is Murder, Plain and Simple, the first in the Amish 
a quilt shop a mystery series by Isabella Allen and I recommend those then also by the same author but under the name Amanda Flower I listened to a salted caramel first in the Amish candy shop mystery series and that was good it was narrated by Rebecca Mitchell and then I read Nancy Drew and the Witch Tree Symbol, number 33, by Carolyn Keene. It takes place in Amish country, so it was perfect for the readathon. And then I read The Half-Stitched Amish Quilting Club by Wanda Brunstetter. I listened to this on Hoopla. Um, it was narrated by Barbara, oh no, Renee Ertle. And this was my favorite book for the week. I loved all of the Amish books that I read. I would recommend any of them, but this was my favorite. A very diverse group of characters, and uh, you got to learn all their stories, and I thought it was awesome. It's the first in a trilogy, and I'm looking forward to reading the rest of them. Okay, so then let me go through a few miscellaneous books, and then I will do all the historical books at the end, because it seems like I read several historical books this month. Now, I had kind of a weird reading month. I had, um, I read two books that I rated five stars, and I'm quite certain will be on my list of top, my top five books for the year. Then I read a few that I thought were kind of stinky. I didn't really like them. Uh, I even DNF'd one that I didn't care for. Um, then, in the middle of all of that, uh, of course, I'm getting ready for middle grade May now, and I've already started reading middle grade books. Uh, and then we had the Amish in April readathon. So I had all these historical books, and then the Amish books, and some, uh, you know, a little bit of middle grade, and uh, a, a wide range from, you know, two stars and did not finish to five stars. So it's a wide range of uh, reading and a wide. Um, variety of books. So um, anyway, I did I did read one other middle grade book. It was the last of the Sunshine State books that I hadn't read, Omega City by Diana Peterfund. This is a contemporary book, but it references and talks a lot about the Cold War period when people were afraid of a nuclear attack. And it has, it deals with, you know, underground bunkers and underground survival places and things like that. Uh, this one I did not care for. I listened to an abridged version on Hoopla, Your Oasis on Flame Lake by Lorna Landvik. Lorna Landvik was also the narrator, and I enjoyed her narration, but the content of the book was what I didn't enjoy. It was too angsty, too many couples cheating on each other and all of that, so it uh, wasn't fun. Now, I had one other... Um, Besides the DNF that I'm not going to finish, I had a DNF that I am going to finish. So we'll call this a DNFY. It did not finish yet. Um, this is Cape Light by um, Thomas Kincaid and Catherine Spencer. I had said at the beginning of the month that I was going to buddy read this with Alana from Alana Reads. And we decided to postpone it. I read two chapters and she was not able to get a book yet. And uh, so we decided to postpone it. So I just wanted to give you an update on that. And if you're interested in reading along with us, then let me know. Okay, then um, before I get to the historicals, uh, I also finished uh, Skeen of the Crime by Maggie Sefton. I wasn't crazy about this one, not as much as some of the earlier books in the series. This I read at the beginning of the month because I had intended to read it during March Mystery Madness and I didn't get it done. So uh, that rounded out my cozy mysteries for a total of uh, three cozy mysteries for the month of April. And so now I'm going to do the historicals in order of um, worst to best, in my opinion. Of course, it is my opinion. Uh, the one I did not finish was for Steve Donahue's Read, read Along, uh, Anthony Trollope's Can You Forgive Her? I just couldn't get into it. I tried a little over 100 pages, and I didn't understand what was going on, and I just wasn't interested enough to go back and figure it out. And I'm sorry, Steve. I just, it's just not my kind of book. I, I couldn't get into it. Then, uh, part of the reason I had to put it down was because I needed to read this for a book club, and I couldn't get into this one either, but I did finish it, uh, by Edith Wharton. It's The Buccaneers, and really, I don't think there's anybody in our book club that enjoyed it either, so uh, I've talked about it in an earlier video if you want to know why I didn't like it, uh, in case you've read other Edith Wharton books and you want to know a little bit more about this one, then um, let me know and I'll send you the link to the other uh, video. So then um, this other one, this is another historical book that I did enjoy. It wasn't my favorite favorite, but I thought it was really good. It's set in 1584, so it is quite historical. In fact, it's labeled a historical thriller. This is Sacrilege by S.J. Paris. It's book three in the Giordano Bruno series. I've never read the first two. I read this for Mystery Book Club for April, and uh, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. 
So now let's end with my favorite two books of the month and probably these are going to be two of my top five for the year uh, and they are The Angels of Morgan Hill by Donna Van Leer and A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Tolls. I listened to both of these on audio. Uh, Donna Van Leer usually narrates her own books. She has narrated most of the audiobooks by her that I have listened to, with the exception of a couple like Christmas Shoes and Christmas Blessing that are more from a male perspective. Uh, someone else narrated those. Um, then Gentleman in Moscow was uh, narrated by Nicholas Guy Smith, and um, this was just fantastic. Uh, it's very character driven. It is about a count who is uh, under house arrest at a hotel in Russia, right across the street from the Kremlin. He he has been sentenced to live out his whole life in that hotel uh, and that it starts out at about age 32 and it starts out in 1922 and it spans about a 30 more or more year period and uh, I, I just loved it loved it loved it and uh, the Donovan Lear has already become one of my favorite authors I read I think 10 books by her last year. I loved every one of them. I think this was her debut novel and I thought it was fantastic. Um, it is set in late 1940s Tennessee and it is about a, um, I don't even want to tell you what it's about. I just want you to read it. It's not very long. Just get it and read it. Uh, it's great. So, oh, and it is set in the same town as The Good Dream, which was one of my top favorite books of last year. And there's only one or two characters that are in both uh, and they're both, they're side characters, but I just, I loved it. Oh, and um, just to quickly mention the Chick Litathon that you may have heard people talk about, uh, that is going on right now for May. And this will be a great book for challenge number five, which was to read a more serious Chick Lit book that you might call women's fiction. I would highly recommend this one or The Good Dream, both by Donna Van Leer, for that challenge. So that is it. That is what I read for the month of April. I can't remember if I gave you a little. Uh, summary yet, but um, there were 17 books that I finished, uh, well, 16 during the month, and I, I had two DNFs, one that I'm not coming back to, one that I am, eight Amish books, uh, one sci-fi book, two middle grade, one of those was the Nancy Drew, which also read for Amish books, for the Amish readathon, uh, four historical, one of those was a mystery, uh, sacrilege, uh, two women's fiction or literary fiction, one was contemporary, one was historical, three cozy mysteries, and of course those numbers aren't going to add up because, um, um, there were some uh, crossovers of categories. But anyway, that's just kind of my month in a nutshell. I ranged from, you know, did not finish in two stars to five stars and, um, you know, just a wide range of genres. So uh, even though I do like to do theme months, this was one of those catch-up months where a lot of things were happening. And I had a good month. It, it all balanced out. I'm excited about the two that I absolutely loved. Um, so those are my highest recommendations. And just to give you a couple of others, I, I wouldn't say that that's all I would recommend. Um, I, I would love for you to read uh, Jack Castle's book, Stranger World, or even better, his book, Europa Journal. I think I liked it even more. Uh, and my favorite Amish book, which I think I've mentioned before, was The Half-Stitched Quilting Club by Rhonda Brunsetter. Uh, that was my favorite. And probably my favorite cozy mystery for the month is Murder Plain and Simple, mainly because of Oliver. I want you to meet Oliver. He was adorable. So uh, so that's it. That was my month, my reading month, and uh, I'd love to hear about your reading month. If you've done a wrap-up and I haven't uh, watched it or commented to it, let me know, and I will be sure to, to watch that as soon as I can. So that's it for this video. I should be coming to you tomorrow with um, end of week one for uh, middle grade May and letting you know what I what middle grade books that I have read this week. And so that's it for this video. I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you.